You know what would be funny? If I put Minecraft into Mario Maker. Let's do that. Okay, while you look at the time lapse in the background of me making the level, let's talk about how I'm going to make the level, because it's gonna be more complicated than I initially thought. I mean, Minecraft is big, and I'm not talking about the fandom. I'm talking about the actual world size. Every single world is 60,000 kilometers long. That is bigger than Neptune. So to be able to fit that in a Mario Maker 2 level, it's simply not gonna happen. But what's even more interesting is how those worlds are made. Every single Minecraft world is procedurally generated. But what does that mean exactly? Well, basically, everything is random. Every single block placement, every single cave, every single end portal, every single flower is not handcrafted by the developers. It is made by an algorithm that runs when you create a world and that just randomly spits one at you. So, not only is Minecraft a very, very, very big world to make, it's also randomly made. And not only that, it has three dimensions. So, yeah, we definitely have a lot on our plate. So, before we even start making the level, we have to answer some questions. Question 1. How are we going to make a planet-sized world in one level? And the quick answer is, we aren't. We just will not. The far easier way to do this is to make a lot of bite-sized pieces, and then make those represent the entirety of the world. Then you give those to the players to, you know, play. That may sound confusing, and it is, so let me break it down for you with rooms. The first room the player goes in is in the overworld. Let's say it's in a mine. After all, mine is in the name. So, we go into a mine, and after that room, we go into another room. This room is in the nether, and it represents the entirety of the nether. So, it has blazes and... That's about it. That's all that really matters in the nether, right? It's not like they added an entirely new update to make that better. Let's move on to the next room. So, the end will just be a lot of floating islands with a boss fight. And the boss fight will represent the ender dragon. And we aren't really going to have a lot of exploration in these rooms, simply because we can't really fit a lot of exploration in. I mean, come on, it's a Mario Maker 2 level, what do you want from me? So, that is how we are going to represent the world. But question 2, how are we going to make that world randomized? Well, luckily, Mario Maker has a lot of random mechanics in it. And using those random mechanics, we can make a contraption that opens up one entrance and closes another. And those entrances can lead to different rooms. So first we will enter a randomization room, and then we will go into one of two rooms. And these rooms will both be caves, but they will have different layouts, just like a Minecraft world. Every world has a cave, many, many, many caves for that matter, but none of them are quite the same, no matter how dull they might be. Hopefully that's changing soon with the upcoming cave update! Then, after the cave, we will go into another randomization room, and that will lead us into one of two nether rooms. So again, the nether will not be the same, but it will have the same basic elements. And it's the same story with the end, but the boss fight is slightly different. We can also make the player feel more like a Minecraft player by enhancing their moveset. Hmm. What is an item that greatly enhances the player's moveset? We're turning them into Link. I know it's not Steve, it's Link, but it, it'll, it'll have to do. He has a bow, he has a bomb, it, it's fine, it, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, we have it all planned out, 
Now it's just time to build it. And you've been watching that in the background this whole time, so my timing doesn't really work here, but... Okay, here we are in randomization room number one. As you can see, one entrance is blocked off and the other is wide open. So let's go in this one. And bam, we're in a cave. This is Link, and again, I know it's not Steve, but it's, it's the best we got. I know we have some big bugs because Minecraft just has really really big bugs. I mean the spiders and the bees are the bees are huge. Like I I think it I think it takes place in Australia. So yeah, we have big bugs. They're fine. They're they're totally normal. Don't worry. They're not going to hurt you except if they do, then they will have hurt you. That green thing is supposed to be a coop is a creeper rather i mean it blows up and it's green best we could do this is randomization room number two we're going to the left again this time and now we're in the nether we have another sword dispensing area and we have all the red around just to kind of let you know that you're in the nether because we didn't really have anything else to use our options were very limited so let's go these are blaze yes they don't fly but it, it's fine they shoot fire and bonus you can also pick up a shoe if you want that's not in the game but we're having some creative liberties here all right it's fine everything's fine Holy cow, we're going left again. This this is some... Well, it, now that I think about it, it's probably not too insane probability. Anyways, this is the end. It's a boss fight against a random Koopaling. So, we already got two hits in. And I forget what this one's called. I think it's Ludwig. So, being Link definitely adds to your arsenal. And it makes combat a lot more fun. We've lost it, but... Well, we haven't lost the fight, though. We lost our link, but we didn't lose the fight. So let's go in. And this is the end of, you know, the level. I thought about putting in slopes everywhere, but it just didn't seem Minecrafty enough. So I went for blocks. Makes sense. For those of you who wanted to know what the other rooms look like, here you go. This is the other cave. We already have two creepers off the back. Man, well, they're fine. They're, they're fine, you know? Um, and here we have, I thought, what was an interesting obstacle. This little bug guy just goes around in circles. Can I kill him? Maybe with a bomb. He may be too big to be... Oh, come on. That must have killed him. All right. You know, I, I'm on a mission. I'm going to kill this guy. Okay, I completely missed. Maybe the blast... No, the blast did not get him. Alright. All right. Maybe if I time it perfectly, it'll... No, alright. Can I just stab him? You know, the, sim the easiest solution most of the time is the simplest, so come on. You know, uh, I... Well, uh, well, that's the cave! Now let's look at the other nether and end rooms. And this one, the beginning is a little bit harder than the other, just because there are twice the number of piranha plants. I mean, blazes. Yeah, blazes. Uh, whoa. Uh, I guess the blazes kind of fall apart in this section. Maybe should have fixed that before, but now you've seen the other nether. So, the next one is the end. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Luck was on our side. Lady Luck. So, the other boss fight is Morton. Now, you'll see here, when he jumps, uh, fireballs come, and they can stun you if you're on the ground. Uh, well, Link's moveset really kind of spices up boss fights. Not in this one, because I'm just spamming arrow, but... Link really does add some fun combat, which I'm obviously showing off by just using one move. <sighs> yeah, it's... 
It's just the easiest way. I can't die on my own level. I, I just can't. I, I couldn't take it. Now, I think we can go in for the melee kill. Melee kill. We just jump on his head. And ignore this room. It's ugly. I just needed it to get into the right warp area. And here we go. That's the end. Minecraft, everybody. It's Minecraft. Trust me.